season as the head football coach of Livingstone, joining us here on the countdown to kick off. What's going on, Coach Gilbert? What's going on, everybody? Man, I always, I always uh, tease you a little bit because you know I'm a big uh, Washington Commanders fan now. Um, I don't guess we did right by you in your one year in Washington, which was a great season. I was like, we need to re-sign him. Might, might be the best on the interior. Man, man. <laughs> no, I was just teasing. I mean, man, man, we should have re-signed you. We should have, man. But you know what? It's all about the business, you know? And it's just want people to understand that that's what it is and the passion and the, what we have for the game as players, you know, that it extends beyond that. So, you know, we wish it could have been a fairy tale happy ending, but it was what it was. I mean, and while we're on that tip, what what, is, what do you take away? What what most comes to your mind when you think about your career in the National Football League, Rams, um, Redskins, as it were at the time, Panthers? I think you ended with the with the Raiders, if I'm not mistaken. I think great opportunity, you know. Uh, growing up, one out of five kids and uh, single mother working nighttime jobs and and overtime and never really having a chance to really be there to help give us all the support we need, but she did the best that she could. And having the, the, the vehicle of football as an opportunity to make a living, um, it humbles you, you know, in terms of being the size and having athletic ability uh, to go and exhibit that amongst uh, so many people. When you, when I look at taking the job at Livingstone going back some three years ago. Um, what led you to take that job at Livingstone? Because you got a lot of former NFL players that uh, are now head football coaches at HBCUs. What led you to take that job? Well, I think for myself, you know, it was an opportunity. Uh, I initially was trying to help my son get into to school, and uh, my relationships with uh, a Hall of Famer there allowed me to have a good conversation and that uh, opened up the other door in terms of where I was, in terms of the years I had invested in just volunteer coaching at the high school level. Um, and I got to do, I was pretty much at a point where I was past that, so the opportunity and the timing of it worked out perfectly for where I was and wanting to coach at a higher level. Not necessarily trying to get to the highest level in terms of the coaching, but opportunities to give back and help, uh, help young men, you know, command their rightful place and find out where they fit in society. On the 2022 season, guys were able to win four games last year. Well, I mean, you know what? I mean, that, that, we're, we're grateful for that opportunity in terms of uh, the amount of games we won, growing as a program, but also at the same time, we look at what we left on the table and opportunities that we had that we want to grow from. And, uh, you know, it's just a growing process. When you're building a team, uh, you, you know, you, you're really behind the eight ball, especially in, in, in a situation like ours with. With, with some of the stronger teams like, you know, Fayetteville, um, with Virginia Union, Virginia State, Bowie, uh, you know, and it's not to put any of our teams down, but they do perform uh, and, and demand a little bit more when it comes to the level of competition. So trying to build those building blocks so we can compete with those guys on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, our schedule is not easy. It's going to be a gauntlet for us because everybody's loading up uh, and everybody's got players from out of the portal. That, uh, that's going to help them strengthen their, their 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 rosters. So you know we'll still be climbing uphill. Our players understand that and uh, understand the task that we have at hand, and we're looking forward to the opportunities that are in front of us. Speak to some of the factors that led to winning um, three more games than you did in 2021. Only one win um, in 21. Three more games. I mean that's 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 a that's you got to feel good about that in terms of building the program. Um, we do. We feel good about that. Myself and as my coaches do. We, we we work hard. You know. You know. Naturally, we don't have the full staffs that a lot of people have, but we make no complaints about our efforts in terms of what we're trying to get accomplished. And you know, going into games, uh, I mean, sometimes we will see the teams. We can tell by size that we're going to have a have a fight on our hands. But my deal is to teach guys. You know, compete and fight. You know, there's two things: stay humble and hungry. And let the outcome be what it's going to be. What you can't control, you can't control. But that what you can't control, that's what you control. And my theory to my team is chance favors the prepared man. And so we have to look at every opportunity that we have to compete. And we don't know what the outcome might be. You know, a team may take us for granted, and then we may we, that opens up the door of opportunity for us. So that's how that was our approach, week in and week out. And then just trying to get guys to understand. Being a young football team, 
trying to get guys to understand what it takes week in and week out, not on the not on the high school level, but on the college level, being that we're so young. And a lot of those guys, man, they bought into it. So it, it gave us opportunities. You know, we played tough games against Winston. We came down to the wire, went into overtime with Mo and Johnson C. Smith. So, you know, and we caught, we caught uh, Elizabeth said we caught them by off guard, you know, being where we are. Coach Hillier is a great coach. And so, you know, we just were just grateful for those opportunities that we had in terms of uh, being able to come out on top. How big was winning the last two games of the season for you carrying that momentum coming into 2023? I mean, I think it's the sauce, you know, in terms of that meaning that, you know, if you want to make a good sauce, it has to marinate, you know, and it has to sit and simmer. And for us, being able to get on a win streak, you know, that's good. That's great for us in our program to be able to come off of a win and then still feel the adulations and take confidence back into another week. So just learning how to do it and be consistent in it. So we got our hands full coming in around the corner here, but uh, we'll, we're going we're gonna, to uh, get the ax and we're going to chop this wood and see what happens. Speak to some of the players to watch offensively. We'll start offensively in 2024. Well, you know what? That's, that's, that's one of the things you don't want to do because I don't want to give a scouting report up. Okay. And being that we're being that we're all at zero zero right now, right. you know, I, I need every advantage that I can get right now. So all I right. think we have we're, we're young coming in at the quarterback spot, but you know we're getting some more uh, athletic guys in terms of you know can run the ball and so forth. So it gives us that secondary option in terms of that one or two uh, primary or secondary option isn't there initially when he's on his reads. Um, you know we're fortunate to get. Uh, one of the top running backs in the state, uh, uh, Jermichael Wells, to come uh, heavily recruited by everybody, and he uh, was close to close to leaving, but decided at the last minute he would stay home. So we're fortunate to have opportunity for to have him with us as a big back, um, can tote the ball, and we really want to put a heavy emphasis on that run game this year. And defense, I know, you, but Kevin Larkins comes back. But we lost Kevin Larkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so, but, but we have, we have, we have quite a few guys. You know, he was a great player for us, especially coming in as a freshman, and uh, being everything that we thought he would be in terms of a still in terms of when we recruited him. And you know, the thought process was that if he outperformed himself, that he would open the doors of opportunity for for that, which he was recruited by and is recruited by Kentucky uh, as it sits. So. We're grateful for that, but we have still have to keep on recruiting. Uh, we went and found, you had to find three more to replace that one because that's just how good he, he is. And um, so we're looking forward to getting those guys on the field and seeing how they'll work together to help us uh, shoot up the uh, secondary so that uh, we don't get hit in the head so much like we did last offseason. The turf, a lot was, you know, you, you got the turf, the new turf. You played on that, I think, the, for the first time two years ago. Yeah. 2021. So, you know, how is it holding up? And, I mean, that's got to be a great recruiting tool. I mean, you mentioned getting one of the best backs in the state to come play. No, no, this was our first year playing on it. Oh, it's the first year playing yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. But that's got to be a great recruiting tool to get one of the best backs in the state. Uh, to an, come. an amazing recruiting, yeah. uh, amazing recruiting tool. Uh, most most folks that come to the school, you know, they get come down the hill and they see the field. And it's re it really has an ambiance about it. Uh, we enjoy practicing on it. Our guys are excited about it. Recruits come in. It is a draw for them. And, you know, we're, we're telling them you know, the only thing you need to bring is your winning attitude to complement that, and we're going to be off to some. Uh, we're going to be on to something special. Your thoughts on? Um, I mean, this is your third year in the CIAA. Your thoughts on CIAA football? Well, first off, I like you know I, I have the most utmost respect for our coaches. Um, and I know throughout our conference, guys, we work really hard and, and really trying to find the edge to be the top dog in the conference. Uh, um, and so I, I love, I, I really enjoy our conference, the competition that's in it. And it's more than just about the football to me. It's, it's, it's having the opportunity to watch young men that, you know, when I grew up, I, I was I was only PWIs were put in front of me. So we never get to see the exposure of so much talent that's behind the scenes in CIAA, the MEAC or the swag as much as we should. And I think we really should have to, we should look to try to expand that to give more opportunities to people to see our, our, these young men perform. So I, I have a lot of love and admiration for our conference. I'm grateful to have opportunity to coach in our conference. And uh, I'm looking forward to us really competing against one another this year to take our ratings up and make people watch us play more. 
And then last thought, again, mentioned the five years with the Panthers. Um, and just kind of, you know, speak to, because you've established a relationship in the Charlotte Salisbury area mm -hmm. from your time as the Panthers. And I think a lot of people can look at you in that time, look at you now at Livingstone, and it helps to raise the profile a bit of, of Livingstone a bit and then ultimately helping your uh, football program get more players and being able to win and all those. They all work hand in hand. Well, I think so. I think that, you know, football is a family. and uh, But I think at the same time, you know, you're looking, you're, 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 we're looking for Livingstone to catch up to, you know, the, the, the attention of the Panthers and things like that because we're growing the program. So what you're doing is trying to gain the respect of a level of excellence. And so while everyone is watching, you know, we're, we're, we're setting ourselves up for the show. And um, we're gra I'm grateful that I had, I had opportunity to play with the Carolina Panthers for five years and, um, you know, look, take care of my family. And I think North Carolina is an amazing place to raise a family and a amazing place to live. Uh, just a lot of culture and a lot of good, good people that are going in and out that have, that's migrated down to the city. So, you know, we just want to just continue to build where we are so to let, let, the, let the Salisbury and the Charlotte connect at some point the way we wanted to. Well, Coach Gilbert, we appreciate the time making the trip up from Salisbury. Uh, good luck to you and the Blue Bears this season.